Supercross has moved south to Atlanta, Georgia for round number eight. The battle still brewing in the 250 class between Ricky Carmichael and Chad Reed. Will they duel it out to the finish, or can Ezra Lust, with his recent second place podium in Minnesota, make good at home on the dirt he grew up riding? The field is hungry for points as we round the halfway mark, and each event becomes increasingly critical to the overall as the stride is lengthened and the margin of error becomes ever so narrow. This is the THQ World Supercross GP and the AMA Supercross Series. Georgia. We are in the Georgia Dome, where the AstroTurf has been replaced with good old-fashioned Georgia red clay, and it should be fast. Hello once again, everybody. Todd Harris along with the champ, David Bailey. Well, it didn't take Ricky Carmichael long to realize he doesn't like anything but first place. Last week in Minneapolis, he looked extremely fast, but was he the fastest guy out there? Uh, the fastest guy doesn't always win. Ricky Carmichael proved why he's a champion. He rode smart. And the rivalry between Carmichael and Reed has escalated to the point where I think Ricky's kind of tired of it, and he had an answer in Minnesota. Ezra Lust, the hometown favorite, he's got the crowd behind him this week, certainly. Oh, he does. He's got his wife and baby here, and, and he picked a good time to find his form again. A strong ride last week puts him right in line to have a great one here in Atlanta. And Tim Ferry, number 15, just got the better of his teammate David Film at the end. He just dug a little bit deeper to get up on the podium. As we take a look at our Honda Series standings, it's Carmichael, Reed, Villeman, Lust, and Tim Ferry. Let's talk about Chad Reed for a second. It looked like after he passed Carmichael, which is a huge task, and then Yogi, he was going to check out, not the case. No, you know, there was a lot of people thinking he was riding too aggressive there, but look at this pass. No respect for the champion. Goes right out, makes a little contact, and pours some more gas on that rivalry fire they have burning right in front of the mechanics. A lap later to the inside of Ezra Lutz. No contact, makes a clean pass. All that happened so fast, I think he lost his focus, Todd, and, and that crash right there wasn't for pushing too hard. I think it all came so quick, and he knows he threw that one away. He's like, uh, I can't afford to do that again. He's coming here to Atlanta, fired up. Do not count out Chad Reed. As we take a look at the 250 THQ World Supercross GP season standings, it's Reed atop that board, followed by Villeman and Timmy Ferry. Right now, let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team, the hardest working man in television, Mr. Cameron Steele. Well, guys, I got a surprise for you. You've got to keep it kind of quiet. We've been talking about these two all year. Ezra Lust family. This is Jen Lust holding Hayden Patrick. And I have to ask you, Jen, how excited was Ezra when Hayden came into this world? He was beyond excited. He would not leave Hayden's side. He stayed at the hospital every single minute. He held him, changed every diaper. He did everything. He was super dad. Well, you guys seem very excited, and I can see why you would be. I, I want to ask you guys are close here. You're at home in Georgia. You got any advice for Ezra as he gets ready to race tonight? Just go out, win, stay positive, and win this one for Hayden. There you go. Team Lust giving advice to the big daddy. Thank you, Cameron. David Bailey, it's now time for the THQ track map. This looks a lot like San Diego looked. A huge start all the way down the full length of the stadium floor into a big bank left-hand corner. Through a tricky rhythm section, a lot of different options to get through that. That sends you into the biggest whoop section we've seen all year. It takes you to the first triple. 90 degree right, up on the plateaus, back down, up on another one, through more rhythm sections, leading you in to the other triple on the other side. Through another whoop section, these are slightly smaller, but still technical. Rhythm section, a left-hander, and the big finish line jump. 250 heat number one is on the line and we are set to go as we take a look at Chad Reed and we have got royalty in the house. King James the first is kind enough to join us his little break from the 125 West region. James good to have you on board your thoughts so far. I think um, the track looks really good tonight. Um, it looks pretty technical and the coming here to Atlanta is really technical because all the ruts out here now. You know I'm just happy to be off you know a couple a couple weeks out there and I'm, I'm still riding don't worry. Well, I asked him if he was enjoying his time off. He said, kind of, but not really. And David <laughs> said, this guy wants to race. And I, I'm sure you missed the action. Yeah, I definitely do miss the action and stuff. You know, winning by 20, 25 seconds. It, it makes it feel good. And uh, now i got to go home and work on outdoor, which is, uh, I think that's going to be a really good treat this year. As we look at David Villeman, Chad Reed, and you watch these guys. I see in the stands watching them during practice. And I'll just ask you point blank. You can run with these guys, can't you? 
you know, at least <laughs> to my opinion, yeah, I think I can run with it. I mean, like David, Chad, and all those guys are really good. And 250 class is really tough. But, you know, once I get on one, I think it's going to be a total different outcome. And hopefully I can be on top. <laughs> Hold on to your hats, folks. We'll take a look at Mike LaRocca. And I remember last week in Minneapolis, he was so sore, he was having a hard time putting his goggles on. He still doesn't look 100% healthy. But The Rock, the name says it all as we take a look at our Nissan starting grid here from the Georgia Dome. Todd Harris, the champ, David Bailey, and the champ, soon to be James Stewart in the booth. And this is 250, heat number one. Chad Reed's there, as is the rest of the crew, like David Villeman, Michael Rocco, Keith Johnson, David Huffman, Travis Preston is here, making the jump up from 125 West. I'll tell you what, a lot of people looking forward to 125 West resuming again, and we'll see what happens there. But this is 250, heat number one from Georgia, and the Cobra, will he strike? That is the question. Right now on the starting grid right now, you're, you're looking like, you know, please make it through the first corner, make it through the first corner. <laughs> and, you know, it's so important. The first 10 feet of this gate is the most important thing. I mean, it can win or break your race, you know. Right now, the start's the main key. Feel the focus right there. As soon as that board goes sideways, a deep breath, and throw it in gear, focus. And, and like James said, if somebody, if the guys next to you get an elbow ahead of you, it doesn't matter how fast your bike is, you got to let off and ride behind them. Well, the 30 board is sideways. We are off and racing in Atlanta. This is 250, heat number one. Chad Reed in a great position on the inside line. And Reed's got a battle going right now. Jason Thomas on the big 450, but it didn't last long. We can look for Reed to start gapping right now. He's trying to go for that fastest qualified time, so we'll see what happens in a second. Mike LaRocco is slid into second place right now, so Thomas out of Florida has given up two spots. He sits in third right now, and it's Chad Reed, and folks, if James Stewart says he's going to check out, pretty good idea he's going to check out if you look at it one more time. See Chad just get to the inside of Thomas, but Thomas is able to squirt right around the outside. A couple of riders going off the track. Chad already has a nice lead. That's interesting what Chad just did. He did a triple that I haven't seen anybody else do today. Um, I think it's a lot faster. Yeah, he saved that one. And I, a lot of guys were looking at it, but it's pretty risky. If you come up short right there, it's a big problem. And Chad's taking the chance he needs to take to gap the field and put the pressure on Carmichael again. It's not going to be pretty if he comes up short. Not to compare him with James Stewart, who happens to be in the booth with us, but he really throws the 250 around similar to the way James throws around a man the 125. Now, they, I don't know if Morocco is going to be able to throw the thing around like he needs to. I, they're coming up to a loop section that Billman has been incredible through. And if he can't get him before that, well, he does. Billman has been incredibly fast through this loop section right here. See if he does it again. If you're Mike Morocco and you're injured and you're hurting, is it just survival at this point? I mean, like anybody else, I would say he has survival. But, I mean, Mike Morocco is the toughest guy on the circuit. So, you know, I think no matter how broken up he is, he's going to give it 110% effort. David Villeman looking very good right now, sitting in second. So it's Chad Reed, David Villeman, and Mike Morocco early on here in 250. He's number one as we look at the pass by David Villeman one more time. And David, take us through it. Well, Villeman was going to get him in this loop section anyway. And uh, the section leading up to the triple right there, you really got to muscle through those jumps and get, get the right timing. And, you know, when you're not 100%, there's no way in the world you're going to be able to ride the pace of somebody that is. And, you know, that was Villeman's problem in the last few rounds. He wasn't able to give that little bit extra that Reed and Carmichael have. And you know, hopefully tonight we'll see some of that. It'll be a three- or four-way battle for the lead in the main event. And look at this lead Chad has. I mean, he's definitely going for the fastest last time. But, you know, Villeman's riding an awesome race out here. And he looks like he's just riding a good second place finish. And I'm, I know, I'm hoping we can see a three-, four-way battle out here tonight. You know what I find amazing is that Chad Reed was not the fastest. And he really didn't make a lot of noise in practice last week or today or yesterday. And, I think his best lap time was a low 53, maybe, and he just went out and turned a 50.5. The fastest lap we've seen from anybody all weekend. The guy brings it to the heat races in the main event when it counts. We're going to step aside from the Georgia Dome when we return to Atlanta. We'll have the conclusion of 250 heat number one. Stay with us. On ESPN Flexion. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, Georgia. It's 250 heat number one is in progress. But your leader right now is Chad Reed, James Stewart, David Bailey. And both said it, this young man has got so much talent. And when Chad Reed gets just a little bit of a gap, the rest of the field is in a lot of trouble. I mean, look at 
looked at it. I mean, he looked, he's looking really smooth out there. And um, yesterday, he didn't ride the first practice of the Friday practice. And I don't know. It looks like he, I guess he was really sick with his stomach problems. And um, look at him. It doesn't, it's not showing now. Well, you got to ride against him a lot last year. And, and uh, you're able to find some flaws. I mean, what is it going to take to beat Chad out here? You know, I, I, like you said, I did beat him last year. And uh, basically, I just kept the pressure on him. And he, he was falling a lot. But, you know, Chad looks like a different rider this year. It's his second year in America. Now. And when, when we come out to race against, uh, hopefully they come out the same turnout. But, you know, he'll be a little bit tougher. Coming down the final few lines for Chad Reed. This is 250 heat number one from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, Georgia. All the riders trying to get to the top four to go right into the main event. Pretty spread out in this one. LaRocco still running third, but 15 seconds behind Chad Reed. Looks like John Hamlin's coming up on LaRocco. I, I think that pain might be getting to Mike. And, you know, he's a really tough guy, and for him to feel pain, he must, he must be hurting pretty bad. That's why Mike LaRocco has had a series of injuries, shoulders. It all goes back, really, to that incident with him and Travis Pastrano. Travis ran basically right in his leg, no fault of his. It's just a fear part of racing. But Mike LaRocco has certainly weathered the storm as the white flag is out here in Atlanta, Georgia. But the rock continues to persevere. Back to the front of the pack, Chad Reed and James Stewart said looks very comfortable, very calm. No real flaws in the armor. Time to whip it around for the crowd. He's riding out there with Ricky. This seems like the opening ceremony lap right here. There's no one around him. <laughs> He's got a pretty neat style. I mean, if you look at actual just style, you know, if you're, if you're out there for that, you're looking at, I think, yourself, James, and Chad Reed as being the most flashy guys that really are able to go fast and make it look cool at the same time. Yeah, he hits this triple so easy. You know, that's the 250 power right there. Results. It's Reed, your winner on board the Yamaha. David Villeman as well on the Yamaha behind him. Mike LaRocco in third, Sean Hamlin in fourth, and unfortunately, James Smith will have to go on to semifinal number one. Right now, let's send it down to the track and Cameron Steele. At the last round of Minneapolis, Chad Reed left there. I'd say a little disappointed might be an understatement. Chad, this has got to feel quite a bit better getting back on top of the, yeah, at least it's a heat race win. Yeah, you know, I started the way like this last weekend. Uh, unfortunately, in the main, I, I went down twice, but you know, that's all part of the, the learning coming, Cavern. You know, I was really mad after it, but uh, you held me up. <laughs> but hey, I had fun, and uh, you know, the track's really good here tonight. We tried some things with the bike, and it seems to be working. I got a little bit of a section over there that uh, no one else is doing yet. So uh, you know, I want to thank all the guys at Yamaha, Thor, Putnam, and Scott Bridgestone. And, Hopefully tonight we can all uh, team up, keep it on two wheels, and uh, take another win. Looks that worked out the main thing. Right now, let's join Jamie Little for this week's Suzuki on track. If you ride, you've got to wear goggles. And Scott Goggles is one company that has been dedicated to motocross and supercross from the beginning. Bebo Forte, well, he's a legend in our sport, and he talked to us about his company. Well, we have a, a full line of goggles. This one here is our high voltage. This is our new one. It has the forced airflow system. It also comes with the uh, add-on nose piece, chrome, I might add. From there, we go to our our nose sweat. This is our, one of our most popular goggles, the nose sweat three. This one here is prepared for this evening. This is our nose sweat with uh, three tear-offs on, with the nose sweat foam. And this is our tear-off system. When you get a little when you get a little dirt on it or roost, what you do is you just pull this one and this tab automatically comes out for the next pull. I guess what we really have for us is we've been in the goggle business for over 40 years. We have experience. 250 heat number two from the Georgia Dome is on the line as we take a look at Ricky Carmichael and his mechanic Mike Gosler. A lot of pressure seems like every week on Ricky Carmichael, but this week a lot of people thinking, hey, back up what happened in Minneapolis last week. Chad Reed had it, fell, Ricky slid in there, but, you know, he got past Chad, he got past Ezra, he won the race, and that's the bottom line. Yeah, he's just got to be smart and 
And, uh, you know, the thing that's surprising, I think, to a lot of people, and maybe even to Ricky and the whole Honda camp, especially from their reaction after he won last week, looks like they won the Super Bowl, is this that he hasn't been the fastest guy. But yeah. he's still figuring out a way to win, and that's what a, what a champion has to do. And, and Ezra's going to do all he can to try to get this heat race win here. When he came out for opening ceremony, this place went crazy. Ezra Lust from nearby Bainbridge, George, about 40 miles up the road, and he has got... Near 60,000 people here in back of his camp. Tim Ferry back on board the four-stroke, looking to get on the podium. Back up what he did last week in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The 30 board is up. As we take a look at our THQ starting grid, there's Carmichael, Lusk, and Ferry. You want to factor in Way and Voss, Ernesto Fonseca, if he can keep it upright. He should also be a factor. Andrew Short's in the pack, Dave Castillo, and the rest of the field. I'm telling you. If Ricky loses in yellow tonight, you will never see another <laughs> close up for Orange again. <laughs> Ricky Carmichael sporting the yellow as the 30 board goes sideways. This is 250, heat number two, and a great start for Yogi. Ezra left to the front of the pack. Oh, that Kawasaki was out there this time. <laughs> James Stewart loving to see Team Green out in front. Ricky Carmichael settles in for third right now. He's already making a move. This is what Ezra needs right now. A good start to be able to route with Ricky out there. I know he got the, last, the whole shot last week, but he was struggling through practice in the heat race, and hopefully we'll see a different Ezra this week. Well, he got, he has to hear this crowd, man. That's uh, deafening up here. The flash bulbs are popping everywhere. They're like, yeah, go Ezra. Yeah, Ezra is whipping it, too. You never see Ezra was whipping it, so it looks like tonight. And he, does and he that tripled triple. it. Wow. Oh, that takes absolute, and he just went for it right there and took a huge chance, but seeing him do that, no question in my mind, he's going to do whatever it takes to win tonight. Yeah, especially with his, his wife, his first race this year, and the new baby boy. Let's show him, Daddy. Ricky's got the pressure on him. Oh, and he blows it right there. Carmichael goes by Ezra Lust to inherit first place. He gives that a whip for the crowd. If he's close enough to Ricky, he may be able to get by him. Here yeah. it comes. He can watch Ricky's lines right now and see what Ricky made at the time of the last race. Oh, Ricky did it too. Man, these guys are figuring it out quick. Uh, Ricky, I think I was almost surprised last time. So look at the pass one more time, David. Carmichael just waiting and watching. Ezra blew that. He just lost his focus right there. He wasn't quick enough with his body moves to come in there and keep it on the top. He went in there for a seat bounce and that just starts the bike going up and down and Ricky was keeping it flat. This is 250, heat number two from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. The current leader, Ricky Carmichael, as we have James Stewart in the booth with David Bailey and myself, and this is a great one as we go on board. I'm telling you, this helmet cam is, I think, one of the awesome things. I'm a rider, and uh, you're looking dead at it. I mean, that's exactly what you see when you're on the track, and it's pretty cool that they have technology these days to be able to get this out. We just need a pair of handlebars or something, you know? <laughs> and a clutch. We need a reality game just like this. Well, I think a lot of America would love to see James Stewart wear the helmet cam. We get a view of what a knack-knack looks like at 40 feet in the air. Yeah, I like to do one of those where I come from last and second. And I'm, <laughs> <laughs> over, I'm, I'm over those last and second. I'd rather just get the whole time win by 30 seconds. <laughs> well, even though you've done that plenty of times, you've managed it. It's put on enough of a show over the jumps and pull the crowd back into it. You know, I mean, you, it's cool to see somebody that recognizes that everyone's here and they don't want to see a boring race. You know? Yeah, I, I remember when I was sitting in the stands and I used to hate when, like, you know, somebody that doesn't doesn't do a style or the finish line, I used to hate when they win. And uh, you kind of root for the guy who does the trick the most. Yeah. We're going to step aside from Atlanta, but when we come back, we'll see if Ricky Carmichael can continue to hold off the rest of the field here in 250 heat number two, plus the Thor Rider profile after this. Welcome back to Atlanta. This yeah. is 250, excuse me, James. It's 250 heat number two. As we take a look at the top five, Carmichael and Lust, they are battling. There you see Ward and Ferry, and they're in a battle right now for that final four transfer spot. James, when you're in that position, do you just let it all hang out, or do you hold back a little bit? Yeah, I mean, 
mean, basically the whole thing, you let it all hang out. I've never been in that position yet. Hopefully, <laughs> you know, just barely making a name. But I'm trying you. I'm trying you. <laughs> Now, I don't think holding back is ever even, have you ever even said those words? No, I, I never hold back. I mean, you saw that last year. And, uh, you know, I'm not holding back this year, but you know, I'm just a little bit smoother. Even in a heat race, you'll still just, you want to go for broke. No, I mean, in my class, I can be like the fifth fastest and go out in the heat race and, you know, have a two-second pass the last time than anyone else, else on the track. So I'll tell you what's cool about this battle is Larry Ward. He's getting dropped right now by Barry, but Larry Ward, Kind of a hometown race for him as well. Nick Way puts him another position further back. So Larry from you know, fairly nearby uh, South Carolina. He's got a track that's got soil a little bit like this, and uh, he kind of looks at this as a hometown race. Same as Ezra. He, he got the start, but he got shuffled back. Yeah, I bet you 50 bucks Nick Way can't hear his motorcycle right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at it one more time. The pass here it comes. Larry getting to the, the inside, and then once uh, once Barry went through, they just kind of opened it up for Nick Way. Nick's been doing really good. His confidence level is, is at a, you know, the point where he's going, you know, I'm going to try to get Barry, too, before this is over with. Fifth in the, in the main event the past two weekends, he's had a lot of confidence now. David, Ricky's gone. Yep. Ricky's with, gone. With one lap to go, Ricky Carmichael, our leader here in heat number two. We're taking the top four to the main. Five through 20 will have to go to semi number two, and then it gets even harder if you get bumped into the LCQ somewhere where you certainly do not want to be. That section, Ricky just came through those whoops, the biggest whoops I've seen all year. And Ricky, the littlest guy out there with a low rider Honda, he's just hooking up. He's actually accelerating across the top of those things. And, you know, we were talking about style and flash a moment ago. Ricky's looking pretty good out there. Yeah, going around. For a short man, he does got a good style. Well, in all deference to James Stewart Jr., pound for pound, maybe the best rider in all of 250. And we'll find out when he and Mr. Stewart get together. But Ricky Carmichael, your winner in heat number two in the Georgia Dome. Carmichael picks up yet another battle, but we've got a battle still going on for the final transfer spot. Way's in there. Barry's in there. Sega gets it. Tim Ferry will pick up the final one. Nick Way will have to go to semifinal number two. If we take a look at our Suzuki Heat 2 official results. Carmichael's your winner, followed by Ezra Luss, Ernesto Fonseca, and Tim Ferry all transferring to the main. Nicholas Way will move on to semifinal number two. And right now, let's set it down to Cameron Steele, who's with Ricky Carmichael. Well, not only do you want to win your heat race, you want to have the fastest heat race. Chad had a fast one, you were faster. That's got to feel good. Ah, it definitely feels good. You know, the Honda's working awesome tonight. The thing is working good through the whoops, and uh, uh, there's a big set of whoops this week, and the, the bike is incredible. Uh, it's going to be a tough main event, but uh, I feel that I have what it takes to push everyone to the edge. I feel completely in control, and uh, I'm ready to get it on for the main event. Were you surprised a little bit? I know this is the closest Supercross to you, but Ezra lost out front. You pass him, and the crowd still cheer. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's awesome. The crowd here is great. You know, Cameron, I won my first uh, 125 Supercross, first Supercross ever here, and uh, the fans have been awesome. Man, I love it here. Uh, even though I'm from Florida, man, these guys treat me uh, awesome, and uh, I'm just pumped. Right on. We'll see you in the main event. Uh, thanks. All right, so heat number two of the 250 is complete. Ricky Carmichael's the winner in heat two. In heat number one, it's Chad Reed. James, we're glad to have you with us. Your perspective on those two heat races. I think, honestly, uh, you know, the lap times are so, like, they're a tenth of a second far apart. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a good race, but I, I have to see Ricky edging him out tonight. David Bailey, how bad do you want to see this guy in a 250 I class see with it. Reed and Carmichael and Villavin? I want to see it, but the anticipation is pretty cool. So, you know, <laughs> just let all the talk happening. And, and James... Let us just talk, take your time, and enjoy the journey. You know, there's going to be plenty of time for 250s. Just go for the records and move up when you're ready. All yeah. right. James Stewart, Jr., we wish you the best of luck. We'll see you back on the 125 West when we rejoin you. And right now, it's time for our Thor Rider Profile. All right, I caught up with the Cobra. I'm not sure if it's because of his venomous arms or his tactics on the track. David Villeman, the number 12. David, why do they call you the Cobra? Well, that's a long story about my riding style. You know, everybody thinks I'm moving a lot on the bike and stuff. So that came out maybe in 97. So I've been uh, carrying it a long, a long way. All right, I'd be catching a whipping if I didn't bring up his coach, David Bailey, right? He's your boy. You guys chill out. Talk about working with David and how that's helped you. And, you know, having a champion in your corner, does that give you confidence and 
he's been there. Yeah, you know, David has a lot of experience uh, racing and also watching the races since 10 years. So I think he, he saw a lot of things happening and, uh, you know, he has a lot of knowledge about uh, the physical training and everything. So, and he was a smooth rider when he rode, you know, he wasn't like a, a Swedish guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of a quiet guy and sometimes people mistake that for like, you know, a quiet, focused person can be thought of like, well, he's got a bad attitude, but that's not the way it is. You're really kind of more of a fun, just kind of cruise kind of guy, right? Yeah, you know, there's, um, I think there's a lot of uh, things going on with the French guys, you know. You know, French guys, they're supposed to smell, they're supposed to be, uh, to have attitude, you know. <laughs> you know I smells good from here. You know, that's a, that's a legend, you know. I'm, I'm just uh, focused on what I'm doing, and sometimes uh, if I'm not, not smiling, it's because I don't have, I'm not having a good day. You know, what I want is to win. I can't be like Travis and have all happy, uh, even if I got whipped, you know. I just want to try my best and, uh, you know, and think about what went wrong. I think that's the way it is, and I think I showed in practice and, uh, and everything, like, I'm happy to be here and, I, and I'm happy to ride, you know. But, you know, that's the way it is. People sometimes are... Uh, I kind of getting some of this stuff wrong. I want to ask you last question. You win the race. How do you decide heel clicker or whip or how, you know? Is it a freestyle trick? Does it depend on what city you're in? I know. What about backflip? This guy's having too much fun giving me a hard time. So we're out of here. Backflip, David Villerman, Cobra. All right, I'm with you. All right. Now take a look at our Honda flashback. One year ago as we visited Atlanta, Ricky Carmichael stole the show. It was an easy win. He simply put himself in front of the pack and pulled away. The crowd was anticipating Apostle Pastrana podium as he ran in second for several laps. But he would later pull off the track overcome by the flu that had plagued him all weekend. It was the Cobra, David Villeman, who moved into second and on to his eighth straight podium of the season, helping him to maintain a 20-point lead over Carmichael in the series standings. And to the crowd's delight, Jeremy McGrath would finish in third, his first podium in 2002. And third, McGrath's first podium since round 16, May 5th. If you can, try to join us in person for the THQ World Supercross GP and the AMA Supercross Series. Some of our upcoming events, March 22nd, we're in St. Louis at the Edward Jones Dome. On the 29th, we're in Houston, Texas, the Lone Star State at Reliant Park. And on the 5th, we're going to Pontiac, Michigan. We'll be at the Silver Dome. For more information, you can log on to www.fxgp.com. The main event is coming up. Number 34, Preston right there, trying to, the big bike. Didn't get the start I thought he was going to get. Cartwheels for everybody in the first corner. I watched in the red. If that was Preston on the 125, probably just saved it. That's big bikes to get away from me. Meanwhile, the racing raged on as they were all trying to get an automatic transfer spot. And it was Tyler Evans, another rider who's come over from the 125 West class. He would pick up the victory. Now take a look at start number two. We're on board with Ryan Clark. And look at Nick Way, number 27. Not the best start. Remember that. Nick Way shuffled to the back of the pack. Meanwhile, Larry Ward up in the front. He would have engine problems behind Clark Styles. He would end up having to go to the LCQ. That story continues on. With Ward going down, it was Nick Way who made the big moves in the latter part of the race. He would win in semi number two. Larry Ward's bike not running, David. That was an understatement. I thought he was going to have to just take off running until his mechanic showed up at the last minute, and Ward gets the whole shot. The crowd was on that whole scene, and when he got the lead, they could not believe what they were seeing. It was great. Larry Ward made the most of those Cinderella boots. He would come around, ride a great race, as would Travis Preston. And Preston and Ward would go into the main event. Ward winning the LCQ, and those are your Nissan qualifying results. Well, this is it, the 250 Suzuki main event starting grid. Reed, Carmichael, and Villeman are there. Very short Ward. Von Sake is in there, as is Huffman. Clark Styles, who's had a great run. Marco Dubé, James Pavolny, and Joe Aloff as the 30 board goes sideways. We are set to race. Who will pick up the SXGP.com hole shot? Carmichael gets a good jump, but he's got company on the inside line. Keith Voss gets a good jump, and look at this! Cinderella!
Barella has reemerged. Sign up those glass slippers. It's Larry Ward. Amazing. He was able to do that from the outside. Ryder going off the track. Didn't catch who that was, but Larry Ward's got a great lead. A couple of Hondas behind him. Fonseca, who's had a tough season, man. He's gone down a lot of times and laid there for a while. Keeps coming back, and he's got Carmichael knocking on the door. Then Ezra and Villeman. Everybody's were up front. Chad Reed's in contention, too. What a thrill for Ward to lead this. Larry Ward, who was seconds away from not even making the main event, brings out the green flag. So the man from Florence, South Carolina, on the move. Ricky Carmichael now picks up second place over our teammate Ernesto Fonseca. The Cobra, David Villeman, is there, as is Ezra Lust from Bainbridge, Georgia. He currently sits in fifth, and here comes the thunder from down under. Chad Reed rounding out the top five. Uh, if Chad can win this one, man, I'm going to toss his headset and run down there and shake his hand because he's got to pass everybody to do it. He just passed Ezra. And Ward is, is clear. He's got a lead on Carmichael. It's amazing. And Ward's pretty warmed up, too. He just rode that last chance qualifier. He didn't get much of a break. Pretty much just a fresh pair of goggles and a, a sip of water or whatever it is he's drinking. But look at the gap. Still has a good gap over Carmichael, but Ricky just cleared that triple. See if Philman can put a block pass on Fonseca. Almost. Better get it done soon. And here comes Reed. And the problem is, Ward, who just turned a 51-9, and Carmichael turned a 51-0. Carmichael starting to reel in Ward. Now, Carmichael gets around Ward. It's going to make that lap look difficult because Larry Ward is not a layover. This guy is not going to just sit down. Oh, Ricky took me. I'm done. He's going to fight this thing out. And here comes Carmichael trying to make his move. Behind these guys, Billman just went around. Fonseca breathes all over him. He's got a great battle behind this one. The Villeman's now in third, but he better stay close because if Reed or Carmichael gets around Ward. I don't believe the lap time by Ward. 51. That's the fastest lap he's done in a while. And there it is. Carmichael triples out of there. He moves into first place. Larry Ward in second. Now, if I'm Ricky Carmichael, which would be nice once in a while, um, I would try to get as far as I can from Larry Ward and use Larry Ward as somewhat of a buffer between him and the rest of the pack. Yeah, Honda... All those red coats down there are going to be thrilled to have Larry Ward running a little bit of block. I don't think he's going to block anybody, but, you know, it helps to have somebody everyone has to get through. Look at the triple that, that Ricky jumps right there. You clear that by a couple inches, and if you come up short, you might as well just, you better park the ambulance right there, because that would just be ugly. There's no room for error on that triple. Lots going down. These guys are running a pace, Todd, that is so on the edge and so aggressive. That, that, you know, you pay this price once in a while. He bent the bike pretty bad. Watch him in the, the top of the screen. Over the bars, bam! And the bike eh, didn't hit him. That could have been a little bit worse. Hamblin putting in a solid ride. The bike, Ezra's done. That bike's just ruined. Yeah, that's how big those bad those boots are. I mean, you stick the front wheel in one of those, that's what it does to the motorcycle. Well, Ricky Carmichael's certainly on the move right now. Got about a five-second lead over Larry Ward and then the Cobra. Lake Cobra, as it says in the back of his shirt, David Villeman sitting in third. Villeman wanting to get back on that podium after last week where he had it. His teammate Tim Ferry got it from him. He finished in fourth. And on the outside, all of Georgia sad to, sad to see this. Hometown hero Ezra Last not on the track. Yeah, they're coming up to a whoop section, Todd. This is where I was talking about Villeman is so strong. He's got to make his pass right now. He can't wait. And Ward just gets an incredible run through there. Amazing. But Billman's tripling that. That'll be the difference. Now, that moves Carmichael and Billman into the top two. Chad Reed is coming, but I don't think he's going to be able to catch Ricky tonight. He might be able to get up to his teammate Billman and make that a good race, but... Ricky is just unbelievable. Let's look at that pass one more time. It was only a matter of time before the Cobra got him. Now, Larry knew it, too. He's like, I'm not going to triple that. Forget it. <laughs> he wasn't lined up for it. There goes Larry, or uh, Chad Reed, rather. Larry looks over at him going, hey, it's, it's been real nice running up front with you guys, but I'm going to go back to a pace I can, where I can breathe. We're going to step aside when we come back to Atlanta, Georgia. More of the 250 main right here on ESPN. 
to Atlanta and the Georgia Dome as the 250 main is in progress. And Carmichael's now extended his lead almost 10 seconds. So Ricky certainly not one to let up, knowing that he's got a bit of a lead. He'll see the, the rest of the riders coming down the backside. I don't know if he knows that Ezra went down, because for Ricky, it may look like Ezra's right behind him in second. But Ezra is back a lap. Here comes help. Billman, and here comes Chad Reed. Yeah, what helps is that, you know, Ricky, he knows he's in second and third. And when he sees Ezra back there, he'll realize that, that he's obviously had problems. And that's just one more guy he can cross off the list. Dude. Uh, threat for the title. Now take, keep your eyes on Billman and Reed as down this next straightaway. The triple that Reed was able to do is coming right up. Billman a little faster to the whoops, but Reed gets him on that triple. As they both go in hot, they make the turn, and Reed will come out inheriting another position. So Chad Reed goes to second in front of his teammate David Billman. The Cobra now sits in third as they both try to track down Ricky Carmichael, who is almost checked out of this one. No surprise from from uh, Ricky out front. No surprise from many of this. I pretty much predicted that was going to happen. And really, David needed to cover the inside and make Chad pass him on the outside. And nobody faster through the whoops this weekend than Billiman, but you know he's, he's not gaining as much time through those sections as Reed and Ricky are over that triple. That's something he really needed to get mastered for the main. And right now, let's go back down to the track. That's where Cameron Steele is with Dave Dye, Chad Reed's mechanic. Dave, you guys didn't get the start you wanted. What happened? Uh, now we got a bad start, you know, and we're just trying to work our way back up. He's strong. He's going to stay in there. Is he confident when he talked to him, if, even if he didn't get the start, that he could catch Carmichael? Yeah, he knows even if he gets a bad start, as long as Carmichael doesn't get too far away, he can catch him and beat him. Right on. We'll see how it works out. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Cameron. And Ricky. Losing a little bit of ground, but with a nine-second lead, I don't think he's that concerned about a second or here or there. And when they get into lap riders, that's going to fluctuate back and forth. But, you know, Ricky cannot afford to, to be careful here. If he's careful at all and decides, let me just put it in cruise control and just be smart. With Chad Reed hunting you down, you can't do that anymore. He gets over the, the critical triple. If he keeps on doing that, now then you'll know, force Reed to have to take big chances and only pick up a tenth of a second here and there. The last lap by Carmichael, 51.9. Last lap by Reed is 50, a 50.9. So, man, Reed's picking up more than I thought. And Ricky Carmichael certainly lives the rock star life, just walking with him through the pit areas and back from practices. Everyone wants a piece of Ricky Carmichael, whether it's an autograph, a picture, shake his hand. He it just has to be a bit of a drain on him, but he comes out here and, uh, as he said, he doesn't turn in the fast practice times, but when it comes time to racing, Ricky turns it on. Yeah, it's almost like following Cameron Steele through the pit. Yeah. <laughs> Autographs every now. <laughs> Ricky is, you know, the demands that are placed on him right now, now he can really appreciate what McGrath did for 10 years, really, with being the one guy that everyone wanted to talk to all the time and still going out and able to win all the races. And his, Ricky's lead is shrinking, and Reed is just on fire right now. We're going to step aside when we come back to Atlanta, Georgia. More of the 250 main right here on ESPN. Welcome back to Atlanta. We're at the halfway point of the tour. Ricky Carmichael continues to lead here in the 250 main. Tim Ferry now trying to track down Larry Ward, and he's getting ever so close. Ferry on the podium last week in Minnesota, trying to move up yet another position. Getting on the podium this week is going to be difficult because he's still got Fonseca to deal with and then a teammate in David Billiman. Larry Ward putting together a solid ride, man. This is great. Love, he's still holding off Ferry and Hamblin and Nick Way. He was fifth in the last two races. Ward just... That last chance qualifier whole ordeal, man, that just Amazing. fired him up, you know. A 51 second lap time in the early laps of this, I'll put a, a gap on the field is just, yeah, he's, he's gonna pat himself on the back all the way home for that. Larry Ward continues to be the story and I just make it in there, but he's got problems with Tim Ferry who's trying to knock him off and get some more points for himself as the battle for fifth rages on. There you see the lap times coming down. 15, 14, and 13. Tim Ferry really putting the pressure on that four-stroke. Dabbled with a two-stroke for a while, but decided four-stroke, no place like home. So Tim Ferry and Yamaha 
back in the four-stroke running again. Larry Ward having his problems as they go past Joe Aloff. So at one point in this race, Carmichael, who's been brilliant all night, still has the lead. He's still going to, if he keeps it upright, he's going to get the, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Bragg and Rides, the last lap, will get the better of Reed. What well, didn't have to be the fastest rider on the track again, just get the start, be in the right place at the right time. But at one point, he had about 12 or 13 seconds on Reed. That's down to six. I think and the, shrinking. Yeah, and I think the problem is for Chad Reed just running out of time as far as laps go. If they go a couple extra laps, it's a possibility. But I think Ricky is smart enough to know how hard to push it. He knows how long a 20-lap race is. Yeah, he's, he's won plenty of them. And he doesn't get tired. He's not going to fade. It's just mistakes and lap riders is the only thing he's got to encounter, really. Just, continue to race the racetrack. That's been his deal. So I'm not really worried about the other guys. I'm just making sure that the track doesn't get the better of me. And the only race he lost was the race he crashed in. You know, going back to San Diego and Phoenix, he crashed and lost. But when Ricky loses, he still finds his way back to the podium. The second at Anaheim. And uh, actually, Phoenix, he just missed it. He got fourth. But he's able to limit the damage a lot better than Reed has been able to. The races that Reed has crashed, he's been six and eight. And that's about the difference in the championship right now between those guys. This is the 250 main event from Atlanta, Georgia. We're in the Georgia Dome, and that man, R.C. Ricky Carmichael, continues to lead as we are coming down to the waning moments of this main. Carmichael trying to get his fifth victory on the season with two laps to go. 2001-2002 AMA Supercross champion trying to make it a third year in a row for Carmichael, and he has been phenomenal. He's a two-time U.S. Open winner, a three-time U.S. 125 National Motocross champion. You see Larry Ward just getting back on the racetrack. He went down. Not sure how far back that's going to drop him, but man, he had a top five going and just tossed it. He's okay, but you see Morocco is riding in pain. Not going to make things easy for Chad Reed. He's not going to intentionally wreck his race, but he's not going to intentionally make it any easier either. Yeah, right. That yeah, could be part of Honda's strategy to have him out there. Just, you know, I mean, I, I think Mike wants to ride mostly, but, uh, but uh, I'm sure Honda's not saying, no, you better not. They're probably like, yeah, go ahead. And, you know, even James Stewart, who's in the booth with us earlier, said Mike Morocco's the toughest guy in tour, and uh, just take your hat off the guy. He, he rides hard all the time. The white flag is out. Ricky Carmichael can smell the victory. Mike LaRocco holding off Chad Reed just a little bit as they wave him and say, hey, you got to give way. But you remember the tangle they had back in Anaheim, too, where Reed said, hey, what are you doing? This is the heat race, old man. And LaRocco's not giving up anything to anybody as RC gets the flashbulb heated up. Coming up on another triple. And He's going to be happy about this. Last week, it looked like a relief. This week, is like, okay, I'm in control. I'm in control of this. So Ricky Carmichael, the man who has done just about everything, seems to always be chasing the ghost of Jeremy McGrath, continues to come out and win, and that's all Honda's asked of him, is go out and win, Ricky. And he's done that, and he's done it again tonight in Georgia. Ricky Carmichael is the man of the hour in the South, and the Georgia Dome says, well done, number four. And Chad has got to be happy with the way he rode, but you just can't let Ricky get out there. If Ricky gets out to a lead, forget it. When we come back, we'll have our final bit of business. We'll talk with our winner and give you the official results right after this. World Supercross GP has been brought to you by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles. By THQ World Supercross GP. Get tickets at sxgp.com. By Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. And we welcome you back inside the Georgia Dome in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, as we take a look at our Honda main results. Ricky Carmichael, your winner. Chad Reed, second. David Billiman in third. Let's set it down to the track. And Cameron Steele. Well, you want the championship, you got to be consistent, and consistently winning is not a bad way to do it. No, I tell you, Cameron, that was an awesome race for me. The Honda was working good. My Dunlop tires were good. Off the start, you know, it was really tacky out there, and I uh, kind of had to have a good tire. And, Man, I felt so good out there. I got a good start and uh, was able to put a move on my uh, teammates and uh, got by Larry Ward and it was clear sailing from there. I made one big mistake in the little whoops, but uh, I felt awesome in the big set of whoops and that was my strong point. 
That's funny. People have been talking about how gnarly the big set is, and then the little set comes up and gets you. What happened there? Uh, it just got going a little too fast, and uh, you know, made a mistake. And you know, I backed it down the next lap, and everything was good. You know, I felt good. I was pulling away, you know, really uh, a lot, and the lappers messed me up, and Chad kind of closed in on me, and then. Uh, I pulled back away there at the end a little bit and uh, kind of cruised the last five laps. Right on. Well, another great job for Ricky Carmichael. Woo. See if he can keep on rolling. It's been a lot of fun watching him. All right. Thank you, Cameron. At the halfway point of the 250 Tour, we'll look at our Honda Series stains. Of course, Ricky Carmichael out in front. We'll look at all 20 of the riders. And it has been a great year thus far, and still a half to go. Let's send it back down to Cameron Steele, who's with the man who sits in second place right now, Chad Reed. Well, definitely a much better performance this week than last week from Chad Reed. Chad, the start is so important, and you didn't have it tonight. No, I didn't. You know, I, I got such a good start in the heat race. I think I'm going to start going bad in the heat race and save my one good stop for the main event. But, you know, I tried my hardest tonight, and uh, just so I can ask myself, you know, Jeff Spencer, Yamaha, Paso Mimitor. All the guys have been working really, really hard. And, you know, I just got to keep working at it. You know, this championship's far from over. And, uh, you know, I'm just having fun, but uh, just got to pull those stops together. Well, I'm sure I'm not the first person to tell you, but you got mad respect for me, Chad. Yeah, thanks, Cameron. Uh, I want to go off-road this week, but I heard I uh, can't take you. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week. Thanks. All right, thank you, cameras. We take a quick look at our THQ World Supercross GP standings as Chad Reed continues to lead that category. Hey, our next stop, we're going to the Hoosier State, Indianapolis, Indiana, at the RCA Dome. We hope to see you there. So on behalf of my colleagues, the hardworking Jamie Little, Cameron Steele, and the champ David Bailey, I'm Todd Harris saying good night from Atlanta, Georgia, and the Georgia Dome. This has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Good night from Georgia.